there's a pivot table that happens to show some customers' sales and profits for various different uh, regions, for example. And what I wanted to do was link a drop down list to this. Now, it could be for data entry or for producing some other function on the spreadsheet, like maybe charts and dashboards, that kind of thing. And I wanted this to happen dynamically because the thing about drop down lists is you link them to a range of cells and then that cell list changes and your drop down list doesn't unless you relink it to more cells. So I've put on the three different types of drop down lists, data validation lists, form control and active X controls. So if you don't know what those are, don't worry, I've got another video that talks you through all of those and why you might want to use one versus another, pros and cons, etc, etc. Link in the description for sure. May even be on your screen right now if you want to look at it. So anyway, what I've done is this list here shows everybody in this pivot table. When I change the list up here, we now get a different list of names, which represents what's in the pivot table at the moment. Very useful indeed. So, how have I done it? Well, I've used a little uh, helper. So, we just need to unhide this row one. What's our little helper? An item count. So all I've done is said count how many items there are in the pivot table and the minus one is just because I've got a grand total at the bottom of the pivot table. So simple count A, which counts text, count straight count, count numbers only, minus one. Okay, so we know there's 33 in that list, for example. When I click on there, that goes down to 17. How do I use that? Right, well, what I do is I use that to create a dynamic named range, and then I link that dynamic named range, or in fact, I use that dynamic named range as the named range on all of those different types of drop down lists. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now because there's a couple of subtleties depending on the different drop down that you might be using. So, first off, show the named range. So if we go into Formulas Name Manager, here's my name range, it's Customers. And if I click on that, you can see it's highlighting that list right now. So what is it? Well, just simply using an offset formula, which starts at the top of the pivot table on the header row, of the particular column that you might be interested in in the pivot table. Always use the header row in my view because it doesn't matter so much in pivot tables but in any other list but you know people can insert rows between the header and the first item of data so by sticking with the header and moving down one row which is the next color the next uh, number here move down one row you're always going to pick up the first item even if somebody's inserted rows in the spreadsheet or anything like that. So start with the header, move down one, don't move columns at all. How many rows do I want in my range? Well, I'm just going to pick up this number at the top, which is this count that we put on. How many columns do I want? We just want the one column. So it's a relatively, relatively straightforward. If you've never seen offset before, perhaps it isn't so straightforward. But if you have, relatively straightforward uh, formula to, for defining a range. Key thing being that count as the number of cells we want. So we close that. So we now have our name range. I've called it N customers rather than just customers. So I know it's named range when I look for it later. So data validation uh, drop down, very easy. Um, sorry, data validation, literally just reference it as the source of the list and you can apply any other the other criteria and error checking that you want from your data validation. 
So that's that one. This one, right click on it, format control. Straightforward again, just set it as your input range. Don't need the equal sign, just literally type the name of the named range. Very simple indeed. Now, ActFX change. What have I done there? Well, if you look at properties, quite often you'd see something in there, list field range, if you're using it on a worksheet, you might anyway. And we could have just linked that straight. But unfortunately, if I link that straight to um, customers like that, it will work. But guess what? It basically puts that list into its own memory, so to speak, and will never refresh. So even though that named range might be changing in size and shape and contents, the ActiveX control still has the original list in it. So it's not going to work if we do that. So what we need to do is take advantage of the event procedures that are built into that ActiveX control or other event procedures on the worksheet. So we're going to need a single line of code, stress one line, quite simple, to update that list, effectively refresh that list, reload that list into the ActiveX control every time the list changes. So what I've done on here, I closed that, go to uh, view code you can see that I've currently got it added to the drop down click event so this code will run every single time that is clicked so I come out of design mode and mode every time I click on that the list is refreshed okay and that will work so when I change this Nothing's changed right now, but as soon as I click on that, we've now got the updated list. But actually, you can do even better than that, I think, because that is slightly inefficient because you're updating the list every time you click on it. Well, you don't particularly need to. Because we're in a worksheet, we can actually take advantage of a different type of event because if we go to worksheet, we don't want selection change, but what we do have is pivot table update. Pivot table update. Now, if you've got multiple pivot tables, you're going to need to detect the pivot table name. But let's keep this simple. Let's just delete that one. We don't want it. If I put that code, take it out of there, and put it in there, what we're going to end up doing is every time that pivot table updates, that list will update far more efficient because the only time the list is changing is when the pivot table is changing. So there's no point in updating the list every time you click the drop down. But just to let you know what this code is doing, basically sheet one is just the sheet name, VBA code name of this sheet. We could change that if we wanted to, but we left it. Combo box one, again, that was the combo box control name dot list. So just saying the list in the combo box one, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to give it the value of this named range here. And the beauty of doing it like this is that by using, obviously we need to anyway, because it's dynamic, but we don't want hard coding in. We don't want to be trying to work out in code where our list is, but well, could do, but hard work. All you have to do define your name range and refer to it in the code as the, to refresh it. And it's as simple as that. So if we do that, so at the moment, showing you it's linked to the pivot table as we see, we'll change that to uh, say Quebec, We've got a massively longer list. And as you can see, we now got this massively longer list in here. Uh, so different list again so there we go uh, that is how you can do link and active X control to a pivot table as well now I did mention if you've got multiple pivot tables what you might need to do now we could do this by clicking on the pivot table and go to here you can see it's called pivot table one so it's very simple right um, but if we had another pivot table, so let's just copy and paste this one over here, for example, one that we're not, that is now 
pivot table two. So what you don't, when this one updates, that code would have ran, which is somewhat potentially inefficient again. So if you want, you're talking really, you know, icing on the cake here, but if you want to detect which pivot table ran, you can just simply put um, on here, if uh, uh, target.name equals, and then your pivot table name, pivot table one, then, and if. And then that way, this code will only run, I'll just demonstrate it by putting a stop on there. This code's only going to run, that's not running when this one's updating. And as soon as you update this one, it hits that line. I'll just push play. So you can see that would be maximum efficiency. Three lines of code now. All right, anyway, hope that was useful for you. Yeah, that's how you want to do it. This, this technique can apply not just to pivot tables, but all manner of changing list types. Um, it's a really useful technique to have named ranges that count, pick up the count of the list length and then link the named range to your drop downs or any other kinds of controls on spreadsheets. Essential sort of stuff for dashboards and the like. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.